right, so in the reading questions, several of you asked um, for me to spend a little bit of time talking about the end section where Taylor makes a connection between the extra terms that showed up when you did a derivative in polar coordinates to the centrifugal and Coriolis forces. All right, so to do that, I want to start by uh, reviewing this polar coordinate thing. All right, so polar coordinates. Uh, just to remind you, polar coordinates, so if I have x and y, and there's some particle at some position here, that is the r vector, right? Um, so r is the distance from the origin, and then phi is the angle off of the x-axis. Now, you can always write r vector as x x hat plus y y hat, at least in 2D and 3D you'd need a z term as well. Um, However, r vector is not equal to r r hat plus phi phi hat, right? That is wrong. Um, and in fact, you can just see that it's wrong because this term here doesn't even have units of length, right? Because phi is an angle and phi hat is unitless, right? So that is not what r vector is. In fact, if you just look at it, um, in fact, let's go ahead and draw r hat. That's supposed to be a little hat there and phi hat. If you draw r hat and phi hat on it, just look at it. If you do r vector is equal to r r hat, that's all you need, right? It, that's the direction it is from the origin, and that's the distance it is from the origin. So r r hat equals x x hat plus y y hat. Well, okay, so let's zoom in on r hat here. So here's r hat. Let's draw the x and y components of r hat. And this angle here is phi, so you can just look at this and you can see that, okay, so I'm gonna do a thing that you might think is weird, r hat dot x hat, right? r hat dot x hat is the x component of r hat, right? So in fact, anything dot x hat is the x component of that anything. So if I say r hat dot x hat, that's equal to cosine phi, and the reason I did this is that r hat sub x is kind of an awkward notation because you don't usually have the vector and the subscript indicating a component at the same time. And by the same token, r hat, right, the y component of r hat is just sine phi, right? And you know that because the length of r hat is one. Uh, similarly, if I drew phi hat, I'm gonna have to draw it shorter here because I ran out of space. Phi hat that way. Do, 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 do. Well, all right, how do you figure out which angle is phi here? So this um, r hat is perpendicular to phi hat, right? So that's going to be one of the two things. And then this horizontal is perpendicular to this vertical. So the angle between those two has to be the same. So just looking at that, I can say phi hat dot x hat is minus sine phi. And phi hat dot y hat is cosine phi, right? Okay, so um, just looking at those things, what I want to do is make myself some space up here. So get rid of all this up here. Erasing should be faster. I need a bigger thing to erase with. Um, so looking at all of these things, well, I'm going to use multiple colors because I can. Sorry, George. Um, you can just write, R ooh, I didn't want to do that. I made it too big. All right, so let's go small. You can write R hat is equal to, well, there's an x and a y component, so it's going to be cosine phi x hat plus sine phi y hat, right? That's what r hat is. And phi hat is equal to, just look at it, minus sine phi x hat plus cosine phi y hat. Okay, well, well, good. So um, given that, you can just look at this and um, it goes faster with my finger. I'm going to start doing that. All right. So, so given that, good. Um, you can now take derivatives of r hat. Oops, this should have been a sine phi over there. You can take a derivative with respect to time of r hat and phi hat. Remember, x hat and y hat are constant. So r hat dot, right? that's the same as saying dr hat dt is, well, 
Um, I'm going to have to chain rule it. And let's, I'm going to go full anal for a moment here. Let's say dr hat dot dr. And that was partial, right? Partial r hat dot partial r. Part, ooh, ugly. Let me clean that up a little here. Is partial r hat partial r dr dt plus partial r hat partial phi d phi dt. Okay. Um, that's just the chain rule. That's all that is. Well, look at it. R hat doesn't depend on R. So it's just going to be dr d phi d phi dt. So R hat dot is equal to uh, dr d phi, dr hat rather, d phi, d phi dt. So that's going to be minus phi dot sine phi x hat, right? So I took the derivative of cosine phi, um, got minus sine phi and chain rolled in to get the minus phi dot plus phi dot um, cosine phi y hat, which is equal to phi dot times minus sine phi x hat plus cosine phi y hat. And hey, look, that thing in parentheses is just phi hat. So it's phi dot phi hat. Right? R hat dot is phi dot phi hat. Now, I'm not going to go through it, but you could do the same exercise. Just go ahead and do the chain rule and do the derivative. You would work out that phi hat is equal to minus phi hat dot r hat, right? So those, um, those are the derivatives of the unit vectors. Oh, and this was phi hat dot over here, right? Those are the derivatives of the unit vectors. Now, I want to say that you could actually have figured that out by inspection. And you're thinking, what? How could I have just looked at that and just known that? So let's inspect it. So first, what I've got here is, what I've got here is a, a, a particle. That's the little purple pink thingy, x and y axes. And that purple vector, which I didn't label, is the r vector, right? It's from the origin to where the particle is. Uh, okay, in polar coordinates, what's the direction of r hat and phi hat? Well, there they are. r hat, the definition of the unit vector is um, what is the direction that the particle moves if you change the r coordinate? That's what the r hat vector is. And so if you change r without changing phi, it gets further from the origin. So that's the direction of phi hat. Oh, sorry, of r hat. Phi hat is what's the direction the particle moves if you diff if you make an infinitesimal change in phi without changing r. So if I rotate it, that's an infinitesimal change in phi, it's going to move um, in that direction perpendicular to r hat. So that's the direction of phi hat, right? So that's just polar coordinates for this particle right there. Um, okay, well, now, suppose what I want to really talk about is what is the r hat and phi hat of the particle? Right now, there's no difference. But now suppose that the particle is moving. What I'm going to do here is um, rotate the thing around in a circle. Now, this is a special case. This is not a general case. It can move in any old direction, right? But I've just given the special case of the thing moving in a circle at constant phi dot. But you can see that as the particle is at different positions in space, r hat and phi hat of the particle change. That's just really at different points in space, r hat and phi hat point in different directions. So as the particle is at different points in space, the r hat and phi hat of the particle change. All right, well, so let's move r hat and phi hat to the origin. Now, this image here is incorrect because this, this r hat and phi hat is not r hat and phi hat at the origin, right? r hat and phi hat at the origin are actually undefined, right? What's, what's the direction that's away from the origin? All directions. And what's the direction of phi hat at the origin? All right, so the origin's a perverse thing in polar coordinates. It's like the North Pole and spherical coordinates is perverse. But what this is is the r hat and phi hat of the particle but then I've just drawn the vectors at the origin. And why have I drawn them at the origin? Well, because I want to look at how they're changing, right? You can see just by moving the vectors to the origin that they're just both rotating around in circles, right? So they were moving around in space, but the direction of the vector, and that's what the vector is, it is its direction, given that they're unit vectors, their length is one, so all it has is a direction. The directions are just making circles. That's all that the directions are doing. Um, 
So if I um, fade in the dot vectors, right? So that's r hat dot and phi hat dot. Um, if you look at that, that's just what those are, are imagine, um, or don't imagine, look at the tip of the two arrows. These are the velocities of the tips of those arrows, right? It's going around in a circle. So it's just tangential to the circle and those are the directions that they're going. So look at it. What is the direction of r hat dot? It's in the phi hat direction. You can just see that here, right? And what's the direction of phi hat dot? It's in the minus r hat direction. And what's the rate at which they're moving? Well, the same rate at which uh, the two vectors are going around in a circle, right? The, the, um, the vectors make one complete circle in one period. And what is that rate? It's just phi dot, right? Phi dot is the angular speed of these guys moving around. So you can just look at these and see r hat dot is phi dot phi hat and phi hat dot is minus phi dot r hat, right? So let's just move these all the way back out. Um, so they're at the right spot now. So now I've got r hat and phi hat, and actually r hat dot and phi hat dot are not quite at the right spot because they should be at the position of the particle, but I've put them at the tip of the vector and really that's okay. Because if you were going to draw the vector, I'd do phi hat plus phi hat dot dt and I'd get the new phi hat. And that's how you do the little vector sum. I didn't do that. Um, okay, so that's what I mean when I say by inspection, you could have figured out that r hat dot is equal to phi dot phi hat and phi hat dot is equal to phi dot in the minus r hat direction. All right, so now let's take derivatives. Again, we've been taking derivatives all along. Let's take a different derivative. So, right, our vector dot is, let's do the easy one first, x dot x hat plus y dot y hat, right? That's what it is, right? Vx in the x direction plus vy in the y direction. <laughs> no big deal there, but, um, I could have written r equals x, x hat plus y, y hat, and done a derivative with full on chain rules. I would have gotten the same thing because x hat and y hat are constant. Um, if I want to write r vector, and I'll write it up here, r vector as r, r hat, then r vector dot, right, dr vector dt, I have to use the product rule. It's going to be r dot r hat plus r, r hat dot. So that's going to equal r dot r hat plus r phi dot phi hat, because that's r hat dot. All right, so that's r hat dot. What we're really interested in here, though, is accelerations. So r vector double dot. So I have to take a time derivative of this thing over here. So uh, product rule, the first one. So I get r double dot r hat plus r dot r hat dot plus product rule, the second term r dot phi dot phi hat plus r phi double dot phi hat plus r phi dot phi hat dot. And now let's substitute in those derivatives of the unit vectors we just worked out. That's going to be r double dot r hat plus r dot phi dot phi hat plus, ooh, look, it's another one r dot phi dot phi hat. We can just copy that down because there's no hat dot there. Plus, once again, I can just copy it because there's no hat dot. And now there's a phi hat dot, so that's going to be a minus r phi dot squared r hat, right? Because phi hat dot is minus phi dot r hat. Uh, okay, that's great. So let's collect together some terms here. Uh, let's do it like this. I'm going to collect together all the r hat terms and the phi hat terms. So I'll have r double dot minus r phi dot squared. Those are the r hat terms. Plus, um, and if you look, um, I have r phi double dot phi hat plus 2 r dot phi dot phi hat. All right, so what I want to do with this, well, so first of all, let's erase everything above. Mm -hmm. 
And then um, uh, I just want to. So this was this was our vector double dot, right? Well, okay. Let's um, go up here and our vector double dot. I'm going to write our vector double dot dot r hat, right? So that's the r component of our vector double dot is just r double dot um, minus r phi dot squared, right? And likewise, our vector double dot dot phi hat is just r phi double dot plus 2 r dot phi dot. All right, well, so let's think about what these things mean. Well, so first of all, um, r double dot dot r hat, well, r double dot, that's just the acceleration of the particle, right? So that's going to be f over m, assuming m is constant, dot r hat, right? um, which we could also write as f sub r. So I have f sub r is equal to, um, yes, sorry, f sub r is equal to r double dot minus r phi dot squared, or r double dot is equal to f sub r plus r phi dot squared. Okay. And then over here, um, this is f over m because r double dot, right? f equals ma, r double dot is vector acceleration, uh, phi hat, so I could just call that f phi, right? It's the component of the force in the phi direction, so I would have f phi is equal to r phi double dot plus 2 r dot phi dot, or um, r phi double dot, by the way, this should have been f r over m over here, and this should have been phi over m. So to do that, I'm just going to multiply that in there, and multiply that in there, that looks terrible. Let's try to it up a little bit. So I want m r phi dot squared. Plus M M R phi dot squared. Right? That's what I had here. Then over here I'll multiply both sides by M again. So we have M R phi double dot is equal to F sub phi minus two R dot phi dot. Well, alright, so if you look at this, first of all, this this one requires a little bit of thought this thing down here on the bottom. Right? That thing requires a little bit of thought to realize that that is um, the acceleration in the phi direction. Um, and that's just because if I draw my, draw my axes here, I want to figure out um, what is the acceleration in that direction, which is the phi hat direction. Well, if I draw that little thing here, that vector is like d phi, right? And so then this length here is r d phi, right? So the velocity, um, assuming r is constant, right, the velocity is going to be r d phi dt. So again, if r is constant, v dot, which is the acceleration, is just going to be r d squared phi dt squared, right? So that's why r phi dot squared is the component of acceleration in the phi direction. This is much over here, much more transparently the component of acceleration in the r direction. What do you have? You have the acceleration is equal to the force plus a term that comes be that we're doing, a term that comes from the fact that we're using a coordinate system that is not Cartesian coordinates. Now, these polar coordinates we're using right here are not a non-inertial frame, right? That we're in an inertial frame of reference. Here's x, here's y. That's what it is. It's just at different points in space, our vector is different things. So the r hat and phi hat are different in different points in space. So if you just want to get the r and phi coordinates, it's more complicated 
than the x and y coordinates, but we're still not in a rotating frame here, even though these terms look exactly the same. So how do we go to a rotating frame? Well, all right, so I'm going to clean all this up. All right, so now to make sure we know what we're talking about, r is the position of a particle. So that means that phi dot is the rate of change of the phi coordinate of that particle. Let's go into a frame. We're, go, we're going to go into a frame such that um, at t is equal to zero, um, uh, not r, but phi is equal to zero, and phi dot is equal to omega. So this is a rotating reference frame. Um, it's rotating at angular speed capital omega. And I'm going to pick that capital omega to be exactly the same as what phi dot is at t equals zero, um, which means in the rotating frame, the particle starts with no phi dot. In the rotating frame, it starts with no phi dot at t equals zero. Okay, so all right. So given that frame that we've gone into, if I rewrite these guys down here, um, I can say that m r double dot is equal to f r oops, plus um, m r omega squared and m r phi double dot is equal to f phi minus 2 r dot omega. Well, let's actually draw this here. Right, so we have omega, which we'll make out of the plane here. Right, there's r. Okay. Um, and then let's just, uh, let's go ahead and make r dot in that direction. We'll say that just for now, you can worry about this in a little bit if you don't like this. Uh, no, let's not make r dot now. Let's make r off, dot off at some any old direction, right? So that's our vector dot. This was our vector. Okay. So what can I do with this? What I can do with this is... Um, so let's remember the centrifugal and Coriolis terms. So the centrifugal term is uh, omega cross r cross omega. Right? Omega cross r cross omega. Well, so in this case, if I want to do omega cross r, here's my right hand, uh, omega is out of the page, r is up and to the right. Uh, so omega cross r um, is up and to the right. So omega cross r um, is going to be up and to the left like this. So I'll just draw a little dotted line here. That's omega cross r. And then I want to take that and cross it with omega again. So that's up and to the right. And I cross it with omega. Um, and I get something, hey, look at that, that's in the r hat direction. What's more, omega and r are perpendicular to each other. So the magnitude is going to be omega r. And then this omega r is in the xy plane, so it's also perpendicular to omega. So it's, a its magnitude is omega squared r, all those perpendiculars, and we figured out it was in the r hat direction. Look at that. That's just this, right? So the this term we got and where it came from was just taking tra keeping track of the derivatives of the unit vectors is exactly the same term as the centrifugal term that we have in the radial acceleration. All right, so let me erase some stuff here. So let me have space to work. And now let's talk about um, what the Coriolis term would have been. Um, well, so remember the Coriolis term is just, uh, it hurts when your brain dies, you can't do things anymore. Um, yeah, to uh, r dot cross omega, right? So if I do two, r dot cross omega. Um, well, okay, so r dot right now is in, uh, r dot is in that direction, and omega is out of the plane, so r dot cross omega is going to be this way, um, which is not in the minus phi direction, right? 
Uh oh, so that's a little complicated. It looks like there's sort of a term missing here. Um, but let us just remember that we chose, we chose phi dot equals zero at t equals zero. So in fact, I should have drawn r dot like this. So not that one. Because, um, oh my goodness, I just did that wrong. All right, let me fix. Let me try and fix this. It's going to be a mess here. What I was saying was we chose phi dot equal to zero at t equals zero. So at t equals zero, if phi dot is zero, then um, r dot, so that was, oops. So this is our vector. R dot has to be all in the R direction, right? We made that choice. So now um, R dot cross omega is going to be this way, R dot cross omega. And now that's going to equal, so 2 R dot cross omega is going to equal uh, 2 R dot omega in the minus phi hat direction. In the special case where phi dot is equal to 0, um, well, all right. So that is exactly the same as this, right? So you get these, um, by going into polar coordinates, um, you get these, uh, you get these terms here that show up that are exactly the same as the Coriolis and the centrifugal terms. Now let's talk about the special case I was talking about. Um, the special case was where, uh, phi dot was equal to zero. What does that mean? What that means in the rotating frame is that we're only moving radially. So in the rotating frame, if you also move in phi, then things get a little more complicated. Um, but the result, though, is, is, is going to be this, that just by considering a transformation to a different coordinate system is the same as take a particle that's in that coordinate system um, and then and then let that coordinate system rotate a particle that's at rest in that coordinate system will feel these Coriolis and centrifugal forces. Um, you can, the Coriolis and centrifugal forces are an artifact of going into an accelerating frame of reference. And going into an accelerating frame of reference is basically the same thing as going into polar coordinates where phi dot is not zero, right? Notice the R dot actually didn't matter. R dot didn't show up anywhere um, in the unit vector, or r hat dot. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is that r hat dot and phi hat dot only depended on phi dot, right? So um, going into a rotating reference frame, once you're in that ro rotating reference frame, you're going to feel centrifugal and Coriolis forces um, based on how you're moving and what your deal is. Um, equivalently, if I write down the position of a particle in polar coordinates, and then I allow those coordinates to change with time, so to, so to have a phi dot that's not zero, so that's what it means to go into a rotating reference frame, go into a frame that the phi dot is not zero. Um, to figure out the r and phi, how those components change, um, I get terms exactly the same. So really, what is it? These inertial forces are just an artifact of being in a non-inertial reference frame, you can do that frame transformation um, just by considering the components. Now, there, there's a, kind of a scary thing here. Um, when you change from one coordinate system to another, you are not necessarily changing reference frames. So if, if I go to, um, it's like, really, if I go from XY to R5, I'm not really changing reference frames, right? Um, in order to change the reference frame, I had to think, okay, let's also add the reference frame where phi dot was equal to the omega of the reference frame. That's when I change reference frames. So these extra terms that show up in polar coordinates are just because polar coordinates are harder than Cartesian coordinates, but sometimes more convenient. Um, here's another thing. If I have an X and Y that's here, let's do it like this. So X is to the right, and I have another X and Y that's here, right? And they're not moving relative to each other. I'm having trouble getting there we go. Uh, and they're not moving relative to each other. Well, that's a frame transformation, because, or sorry, a coordinate transformation, uh, because x prime and y prime are going to be different from x and y because the origins are in different places. But all you're going to do is subtract off 
um, the position of the origin. That's a coordinate change that's not a frame transformation because the two uh, coordinate systems are at rest with respect to each other. But if I go into, um, like I did on the video last time around, into a frame that's moving relative to the other frame, so the coordinates are moving relative to the other coordinates, that is a frame transformation. So coordinate transformations are not necessarily frame transformations. Um, when there are frame transformations, things get more interesting, especially when you get to relativity, those of you who haven't had it yet, even inertial frame transformations become very interesting. But when one of the frames is accelerating, and we've been doing here the case of a rotating frame of reference, you get Coriolis and centrifugal turns. You can view them either as inertial forces that exist in the rotating frame, or as turns that show up that you need to have there because your rotating frame's axes are moving with time, and so therefore their unit vectors are moving with time, and so there's going to be additional terms um, to just take that into account. Right? So I hope that sheds a little bit of light on that last section of Taylor. Um, I'm going to try, I don't think I'm going to get this done today, I probably won't post it till tomorrow or Thursday. Um, I'm going to try and do a thing all about the Foucault pendulum as well, and analyze it in an inertial frame of reference and show you stuff. And if I really go nuts, I might even do it with a Lagrangian. But we'll see. That's it for now. Great. Here's Buttercup again. I was going to show you a novella, but she's in the litter box right now, and I don't want to mess with that. So, Butter, get close to the webcam. Say hello. She's just going to do it. Just put it. Over here. Yeah. Over here. Over here. She's not going to look at you. See, there she is. Say hello, Butter. She's a kitten. Yes, and this is Novella. Yes, and she's very not happy to be held. You're not happy to be held. Kitty. Yes. She says, "Please do put me down now." Thank you.